Hey boys, it's Harm9. Today we're going to be going over some of the best counters for the Oppressor Mark II in Grand Theft Auto Online. Now we all know the Oppressor Mark II, we all hate the Oppressor Mark II, if you're probably watching this video you probably hate it. I know I do for sure. Anyway, some of these counters are going to be what I would like to call a soft counter, something that you can sort of use to get away from an Oppressor but not necessarily to fight back against one. We're also going to have what I'm going to call some medium counters, so things that you can maybe use to fight back against an Oppressor Mark II also while you're defending yourself or at least armoring yourself. And then we are going to have some hard counters to the Oppressor Mark II, things that you can use to fight back against the Mark II and hopefully kill them. Anyway guys, we're going to start off with number 10. At number 10 we have the Akula. Now this is going to be an example of a soft counter. Now the Akula, if you didn't know, one of the fastest helicopters in Grand Theft Auto Online. On top of that, the Akula also has some really, really good features that are going to help you to get away from Oppressor Mark IIs in Grand Theft Auto Online. The first one of those things is, of course, the Akula has stealth mode. If you didn't know, when you press H on keyboard, I'm not sure what the bind is on the controller, you can go into stealth mode. This will take your helicopter and you off of the map for every player in your session. They will not be able to see where you are on their map or their minimap which obviously is pretty useful, especially if it's a nighttime, you can usually use this to get away from the Oppressor Mark II. In addition to that, like I said, it is also one of the fastest helicopters in Grand Theft Auto Online, which is very, very useful. And on top of that, the Akula is also, if not the best, one of the best climbing helicopters in Grand Theft Auto Online. This thing climbs insanely fast. Even when you're going at full tilt forwards, the Akula is always going to be gaining altitude which is very useful for getting away from Mark IIs because Mark IIs do not like to gain altitude very well. And once you get them really high up in the air, it's really hard for them to get back down towards the ground as well. So the Akula has some really good counters. And the Akula also ranges from $2.8 million if you have the trade price to $3.7 million if you don't have the trade price. The Akula is a really useful helicopter beyond getting away from Oppressor Mark IIs in GTA. I would highly recommend picking up the Akula, it is absolutely awesome. Anyway guys, that is it for number 10, let's move on to number 9. Okay guys, at number 9 we have the Scramjet. Now the Scramjet, you're probably like, wow, this thing is terrible, why would you even put this on the list? Well, the Scramjet has the most aggressive missiles in Grand Theft Auto Online, that means they have the best tracking with the best speed. Now, the problem with the Scramjet, well, there's actually a couple of them. The most prominent problem is that this thing is absolutely piss weak, like I'm sure you guys know. This thing can get one shot by any missile in the game, or an explosive heavy sniper, anything will take this thing down in one shot. So it's not very useful if you're planning on getting in a prolonged fight against an Oppressor Mark II. However, the Scramjet, in my opinion, is still viable as a hard counter to the Mark II as long as you get your shot off first. Now, how missiles work in Grand Theft Auto Online is there's basically Tier 1 missiles, Tier 2, Tier 3, etc. Now, the Scramjet has Tier 1 missiles, the Oppressor has Tier 2 missiles. Believe it or not, I know the Oppressor's missiles are crazy, but Scramjets are actually even better. So, assuming you can get a shot on a Mark II, you will win the fight. Now the Scramjet has a couple of things to aid you in doing this. It has a jump ability like you guys can see right here and it also has a rocket booster so you can hopefully get around a corner if a Mark II is chasing you so that their missiles cannot hit you. Now the best way to use the Scramjet against a Mark II in my opinion is to get above them because the Oppressor Mark II can't really aim up very easily so if you can get above them with the Scramjet which isn't super hard given the boost and the jumping feature you should be able to take them out. However, the Scramjet is not that great because it also costs $3.5 million with the trade price unlocked to $4.6 million without the trade price unlocked. Now this is a very expensive price given the performance of the vehicle is not that great, but it is still a pretty good vehicle for taking out Mark II's. However, there are definitely some better ones. That's why it's so high on the list. Anyway guys, let's move on to number 8. Alright guys, at number 8 we have the Insurgent Pickup Custom. Now the Insurgent Pickup Custom is not the best counter to the Oppressor Mark II, but it's not the worst either. So this is more of a medium counter. Now the Insurgent Pickup Custom, the best way that you can take out Mark IIs with this thing is with a gunner. And so you're going to need a player with you or you're going to need to get in the backseat yourself and go up to the machine gun on the top of the vehicle. 
Now the machine gun on the top of the vehicle can absolutely spit out rounds. They do very heavy damage. You can kill a player in only a couple of shots. If you have the 50 cal equipped, you can, I believe, one shot or two shot a player. So if you can manage to get two shots on an oppressor Mark II user, you should kill them. With the minigun, you're going to get more shots downrange. Probably a higher chance of hitting them, but they do a little bit less damage. So the gunner should maybe be able to take out a Mark II if their aim is really good. It's not the best way to kill them. It's a little bit inefficient, but it is possible. Now there is another way that you can take down a Mark II with the Insurgent Pickup Custom, and that is to lure a Mark II into a tunnel of some sort, like you guys can see right here in the viaduct in the middle of Los Santos. If you can lure an oppressor down here and drop proximity mines that are equipable on the Insurgent Pickup Custom, there is actually a pretty good chance that an oppressor Mark II will fly in between the road surface and the viaduct and actually activate one of these mines and insta-kill themselves. Now that's pretty much it for the hard counters to the Oppressor Mark II with the Insurgent Pickup Custom. Now I would say the Insurgent Pickup Custom's defense is actually more where it shines. This thing can take 27 homing rockets from an Oppressor Mark II, so if you do the math, Mark II only has 20 rockets. They're going to need to use their full rockets, hit every shot, despawn their Oppressor, respawn it, and then shoot you with another 7 rockets. There's a pretty good chance that you're going to survive it and you can of course put your insurgent back into Los Santos Customs or something like that to repair it and of course come back out and you are going to be good. Now the insurgent pickup custom is quite a bit cheaper than the previous vehicles we've mentioned. This goes for about 1.6 million dollars once you've bought the insurgent pickup and upgraded it to the insurgent pickup custom. Of course to do this you will need either an Avenger or an MOC so keep that in mind. Anyway guys let's move on to number seven. At number seven, we have the Stromberg. Now this was previously one of the best counters to the Oppressor Mark II in Grand Theft Auto Online. Now the Stromberg is a bit weakly armored, but it is a hard counter to the Oppressor Mark II. Now the Stromberg has missiles on it and it also has machine guns. The missiles are limited with this vehicle. So I want you guys to keep that in mind. This vehicle only has 50 missiles. So once you've shot all 50, you're gonna have to go put this thing away bring it out again to get more. So that is a little bit of a pain. Now, the Stromberg does have the second most aggressive missiles in the game. It has the same missiles that the Mark II has. Now, the problem with the Stromberg is it is a pretty slow vehicle. It's not very maneuverable. The handling isn't great. It's not fast. It doesn't have a rocket booster. There's not a lot going for the Stromberg other than the fact that it has missiles and it has a little bit of armor. Now, most of the time, an Oppressor Mark II will actually beat out a Stromberg, I find. But the Stromberg does have a chance at killing the Mark II because the lock-on range is pretty good with the Stromberg. Now, of course, the Stromberg is also an amphibious vehicle, so you can take this thing in the water and it will be able to navigate underneath the water surface. So that can be a little bit helpful for getting away from Mark II oppressors because obviously they cannot really shoot below the water. Now, the problem with the Stromberg is it goes for $2.4 million with the trade price unlocked or $3.2 million without the trade price unlocked. So it is a little bit more on the expensive side, but it is an okay counter to the Oppressor Mark II. Not my favorite choice, not my personal pick, but I felt like it deserved a spot on this list. With that being said, let's go for a much cheaper option up next at number six. All right guys, at number six, we have the Explosive Heavy Sniper Mark II. Now in order to get this, you are going to need either an Avenger or an MOC because you're going to need a weapon workshop within either of those things in order to upgrade your Heavy Sniper into a Heavy Sniper Mark II. On top of that, you're also going to need a bunker, and I'm just starting to realize that this is not exactly a cheaper option. You're also going to need to do bunker research in order to get explosive rounds for your Heavy Sniper Mark II. So, forget what I said about this being cheap, this is probably pretty expensive, if not more expensive than everything else we've listed. Anyways, with that out of the way, the Explosive Heavy Sniper is very, very good for taking Oppressor Mark IIs out of the air. As you guys can see, it will one-shot any car on the street that is being driven by a civilian. Sometimes this thing will take two shots to actually take out a player-driven vehicle in GTA. It's just how it works. For some reason, vehicles have a little bit more armor when a player is inside of them compared to an NPC. Now, you will maybe run into a problem with this option on console. It is going to be a little bit harder to aim this thing than it is on PC, which is what I am on. But if you can manage to hit an oppressor with the explosive round, it will knock the oppressor Mark II rider off of the vehicle and make it fall down to the ground. And you may be able to destroy the oppressor Mark II while it is on the ground. You may even 
be able to one-shot the Oppressor Mark II in the air, depending on how much damage has already been done to the Oppressor. Anyway guys, the Explosive Heavy Sniper is not the best option, hence why it being a little bit higher on this list. It is pretty expensive to get and is not exactly the most effective way of taking out a Mark II, but I did feel like it was worth mentioning. With that being said, let's move on to a really good soft counter. Alright guys, I'm not going to drone on too much about this vehicle, but this is of course the Night Shark, as I'm sure many of you are aware. The Night Shark is a extremely fast armored vehicle in Grand Theft Auto Online. I would say it is the fastest armored ground vehicle in the entire game. The Night Shark is very quick. It has very good armor. It actually shares the same armor as the Insurgent Pickup Custom, being able to take 27 homing rockets from an Oppressor Mark II, which is pretty good. Like I said, with the Insurgent Pickup Custom, they are going to need two Oppressors to be able to take you out in the Night Shark, which is pretty good. You're going to have really good protection with this thing, and it's also very fast. Now, my Night Shark in Grand Theft Auto Online has window plating on it, which doesn't allow me to shoot out of the vehicle. However, if you do not have window plating on the vehicle, you can throw sticky bombs out and you can, of course, shoot. So if an oppressor is tailing you, you can shoot back at them or you can throw sticky bombs at them, which is a really effective way to actually kill the Mark II. And if you don't have window plating, it makes this thing into more of a medium counter to the oppressor Mark II. Anyway guys, I'm not going to drone on about the Night Shark. I'm sure everyone on Earth has talked about the Night Shark to you guys before. Let's move on to number four. We've got something that I feel like less of the community knows about up next. All right guys, next up is the Fully Loaded Ruiner. Now, the Fully Loaded Ruiner is a mission that you can launch with the Ruiner 2000 in Grand Theft Auto Online. Now you can launch this in any free mode lobby, so long as there is not an event already taking place like Headhunter, Sightseer, Piracy Prevention, anything like that from another CEO within your session. Now what you're going to do if you can start this mission is register as a CEO, go to your jobs and you should see fully loaded right at the top so long as you have a Ruiner 2000 already bought within the game. Now the reason that this isn't any higher on the list is because the Ruiner 2000 costs a lot of money, $4.3 million for the trade price or $5.75 million if you do not have the trade price, which is very, very steep. However, the fully loaded Ruiner is one of the best vehicles in the game. Now you will have to go and pick up the fully loaded Ruiner from a spot that it spawns in at on the map and you will get these targets all over your map that you're supposed to go and kill. However, you do not have to do this. You can of course use the fully loaded Ruiner on other players and that is what makes it really good. Of course, you can use it against Oppressor Mark IIs. Now the fully loaded Ruiner has the best missiles in the game. It is very similar to the Scramjet. Now the difference between the fully loaded Ruiner and the Scramjet though is that the fully loaded Ruiner is not one-shottable. The fully loaded Ruiner has insane armor because the mission that you are using the fully loaded Ruiner for is to go and take out a bunch of armored vehicles with turrets that will spam you. They have miniguns on the top of all these vehicles as you guys can see. They will shred you. So that's why the fully loaded Ruiner has so much armor. In addition to that, the fully loaded Ruiner is also not lock onable. However, with the Ruiner, of course, you can lock on to targets. So if an Oppressor Mark II comes at you when you're in this thing, you'll be able to lock onto them and they will not be able to lock onto you. And even if they hit you with every single missile their Oppressor has, they still are not going to kill you. So you have a pretty huge advantage over the average Mark II user when you are in the fully loaded Ruiner. Now, like I said, it is a bit of a pain to use this. You have to make sure that nobody's doing a mission already in your session, and then you have to go and pick it up from a random location. So it's a little bit annoying, and it is a really expensive vehicle, so that is why it is so high on the list. Not that number four is very high. It's still a great vehicle, but it is just super expensive. So for the average player, this is not going to be the best option. With that being said, let's move on to number three. This one is actually going to be a little bit more affordable. And number three, we have Imani Tech vehicles. Now there are quite a few of these in the game. There is the Enus Deity, there is the Dubachi Champion, there is the Bravado Buffalo STX, Patriot Mill Spec, the Declassy Granger 3600LX, and the Enus Jubilee. And I believe that's it. I could be missing one, but I'm pretty sure that I've covered all of them. Now you will need an agency in order to do this and agencies go for right around $2 million and you will need an agency workshop. So realistically, it's not that much cheaper than the fully loaded Ruiner, but it's a little more convenient. Anyways, the agency is a great business. Now with these Imani Tech vehicles, you can upgrade them to have Imani Tech and a missile lock on jammer. 
So effectively, these things will be like a fully loaded ruiner, not being able to be locked onto. You don't have to start up any missions to do this, you just have to have the vehicle with the lock on jammer equipped. Now all of the Imani Tech vehicles can also be equipped with armor, machine guns, and a proximity oil slick mine dropper. These vehicles are some of the best in Grand Theft Auto Online currently, I use them all the time when I play. The ones that I would recommend picking up more than others, the Granger 3600 LX is going to be the cheapest option. Once you have the trade price, it is just over a million dollars, which is not much money to get into one, so it's not too bad. However, if you want a really fast one, the Bravado Buffalo STX or the Dubachi Champion are going to be the options that you are going to want to pick. These are great vehicles. As you guys can see, the lock on jammer works very well. Even with a homing launcher aiming at my own vehicle, I can't lock onto it. But if I transfer over to this vehicle on the other side of the street, I can lock onto it just to show you guys how this sort of works. And this is not just with the handheld homing launcher, this is with any homing missile in the entire game. This is pretty amazing. Anyway guys, that is it for the Imani Tech vehicles and number three. Let's move on to number two. Now at number two, we have something that you are going to need to have if you want to do the explosive heavy sniper thing or upgrade the insertion pickup custom cheaply, and that is the MOC cab. Now the MOC cab and the MOC are the cheapest way to upgrade the insertion pickup custom or get explosive heavy sniper rounds. And the MOC cab is the most armored vehicle in all of Grand Theft Auto Online. The MOC cab can, of course, disconnect from the regular MOC in order to drive it a little bit quicker. Now, the MOC cab is able to take 67 to 72 Oppressor Mark II missiles. I've heard both of those numbers several times, and I don't know which one of those is the correct number for how many missiles it can take, but it's between 67 to 72 Oppressor Mark II missiles, which is absolutely insane. There's a pretty good chance that they're actually going to need to take four full Oppressor Mark IIs out in order to actually kill you in the MOC cab, assuming that they miss a few missiles each time, which is pretty likely. Now the MOC cab is a little bit slow and it is a little bit inconvenient to get. You have to spawn in the MOC and then you have to drive to wherever it is, hop in the cab, disconnect the trailer, and then you're on your way. So it's not exactly like it's super convenient. You can't just call the mechanic up and say, hey, I want the MOC right beside me. You have to kind of drive to it, which it's not the end of the world, but if you're getting spawn killed, it could be slightly annoying to try to do this. So that is just a fair warning, but the MOC cab is absolutely amazing for surviving against Suppressor Mark II's. It's the best soft counter there is in Grand Theft Auto Online. Maybe even a medium counter because you can throw sticky bombs out of this thing and you can shoot out of it. So you might even be able to take out a Mark II with this thing depending on how good your aim is. Anyway guys, that's it for number two. Let's move on to the best hard counter in Grand Theft Auto Online against oppressors. At number one guys, we of course have the Toreador. This came out with the Keo Perico Heist DLC in Grand Theft Auto Online and it basically is a Stromberg but better in every single way. Now the Toreador has better armor than the Stromberg. It is also a amphibious or submersible vehicle, so you can drive this thing into the water and you will be fine. In addition to that, it's also faster and has better handling than the Stromberg and it has a rocket booster. And it costs roughly the same amount of money, coming in at $3.7 million. The Toreador also has the second most aggressive missiles in the entire game, very similar to the Stromberg. The Toreador, in my opinion, is the best counter to the Oppressor Mark II in Grand Theft Auto Online. I have taken out so many Mark IIs with the Toreador. It makes life so much easier. And in addition to everything that I've already said, the Toreador also has unlimited missiles and it does not have a unique marker on the minimap. So when you drive up in it, people are not going to know whether you're in an Adder or you're in a Toreador. They have no idea until they actually see you. So it gives you a certain element of surprise. The Toreador is an absolutely goaded vehicle in Grand Theft Auto Online, and if you want to survive against Oppressor Mark II's the best out of anything in the game and be able to fight back better than anything else in the game, the Toreador is for you. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. If this video helped you out, if you learned something, a like is of course appreciated, if not dislike. Subscribe if you guys are new, and I will see you all in the next video. Until then, take care. Peace.